Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. Today we're going to discuss how we measure earthquakes. Okay, so we're going to discuss some of the technology that we have available to us as to, to measuring the magnitude or the intensity of an earthquake. Okay, so just to, to recap, so we've looked at this concept of how earthquakes kind of occur. That we have plates, and so in this case, like moving towards each other or, or grinding past each other, where you know one one plate goes underneath the other or subducts, that we get where these, this rock makes contact, we get this grinding or this friction that happens. The rocks don't slide kind of neatly past each other, but they kind of catch and then by friction, and then eventually then they might snap or kind of jerk. And what happens then is that we get these shock waves that kind of get sent out as a result of that, that movement that might happen. Or perhaps, you know, so maybe it happens right, right here kind of at the surface, or more commonly it happens kind of a bit further down um, underneath the surface. Okay, and so these shock waves, or this kind of this movement of the earth, this vibration of the earth, is what we are measuring here. And we call these seismic waves. Okay, so the idea is that they are like shock waves from an explosion. You know, like say some TNT or some dynamite goes off and it causes these ripples in the air or in, and in the ground as well. And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to detect these seismic waves. Um, and we're trying to work out what's their power. Okay, what's the, or what's the intensity of, of the earthquake that's happening here. Okay, and then also we're interested in where did it happen. Okay, so... How powerful was it? Where was it? And therefore, then that allows us to um, study it afterwards. But also, we can build that into technology to actually warn people of that an earthquake is happening, and so that they can prepare and they can brace for it. And then perhaps that emergency services can be prepared for afterwards. Okay. So there's two bits of equipment that we, as seismologists, those people who study earthquakes, can use to help try and actually study and measure this. The first one that we're going to talk about is called a seismograph. So what we have, um, let's see if I can kind of represent this faithfully. I'm clearly not an art teacher, so we'll see how we go. Okay, so we have a block or something that's attached to the ground. Okay, so the, what we have, this is attached to the ground, and then what we have is that we have a a weight of some description that is secured to this plate that's attached to the ground and then it hangs so this is our weight that that is suspended by by some mechanism from the uh, from this kind of arm that, that comes up here okay now this is a very simplified sort of diagram here but so so bear with me there let's see if i can use a finer pen that might help to illustrate it a little better okay so what happens is that this um, this weight here, this, so it's, you know, maybe it's, so it's, it's got some mass to it, it's quite heavy, like a heavy metal ball or something like that, is designed so that when it hangs here, that it actually is able to stay still when the ground moves. Okay? So um, we can say so remains stationary while ground can move. Okay? So it's like perhaps if you if you hung a balloon from a piece of string in your car, okay, and so that it actually is able to, um, it can stay in place while your car kind of kind of moves, okay. And so then what we do is we attach a writing instrument to the bottom, okay. That that's this bit here. So maybe like a like a pencil or a pen or a marker of some description that is attached to the bottom, so that it's very close to the bottom here. And then what we have is that we get a, let's see if I can use a different colour. This is a strip of paper that goes underneath that writing instrument. And it kind of, it comes off, a, perhaps it comes off a kind of a roll or a reel at this end. Um, and then it feeds through this way and then it kind of gets collected that end. What happens then is that the, this, the, the, the base of this, this seismograph because it's attached to the ground, so it's attached to the ground, um, that then when the when the earth moves, when the crust of the earth moves during the earthquake, 
Okay, so let's see, you know, so if, it, if, if that kind of is moving from side to side or up and down, depending on the type of earthquake wave that we're talking about, that this base stay, so this base will move with the ground, but that this weight will stay still. And this paper that's, that's attached to the, the base or that's moving with the base will move from side to side as, it vi as the earth is vibrating. And so then this writing instrument will trace a line on the bit of paper and so then as it moves, it will kind of, it will draw these squiggly patterns on the bit of paper as it feeds through, as the paper is shifting from side to side. Okay, it's a, lot, this, a, a similar, kind of a similar sort of thing if you've ever watched, you know, like TV kind of cop shows where they've got, they get someone hooked up to a lie detector, and they get a bit of paper that feeds through and these little squiggly lines get produced. You know, so it's that, that same sort of thing that they're, they're looking at. And so... Um, the seismograph refers to this writing action, okay? That this idea that it's actually this writing or drawing kind of action of the pen on the bit of paper that is what we are trying to study, okay? And so then the, the larger the vibrations are, the bigger the squiggles will be um, on our bit of paper. But as you can imagine, that it's, it's a you know it's it's fairly simple sort of concept that we've got a bit of paper and then we've got a weight that can stay still when the Earth moves and then it draws a pattern. But that, that, that's not really sophisticated enough for what we need for today. So what we use is another bit of equipment that, that, that instead of drawing a bit of paper that needs to be interpreted um, um, in, you know, in a bit of an analogue kind of way, that we can actually record these things digitally. And so what we use, another seismo word, is a piece of equipment called a seismometer. So what it does... I can't um, really draw it for you because it's, it's a bit more complicated, but it, it works on the same um, basic kind of principle, but it, it makes a digital signal. It picks up these vibrations digitally. Okay, um, so, so it still works on the same principle. It records the vibrations, um, so, but a digital signal now the reason that it's good is that it can record it digitally and we can we can study it electronically you know, on a computer screen we can print it out if we need to to put, um, uh, we can if we print it out we're producing what's called a seismogram is the name for the bit of paper that we study okay so we can print it out if we need to but what we are able to do is this concept of ampl amplification okay if you've ever played an or, or seen an electric guitar being played it's this idea that we're picking up a very small vibration on a string, you know, a metal string that's attached to the body of a guitar, and we're taking that little vibration, we're amplifying it, we're making it bigger and louder than that original vibration was. So we're amplifying it, we're making it big, taking a little thing, making it bigger and easier to hear in the case of a guitar. You would know this if you've ever played an electric guitar when it's not plugged in. It's a very small sound by comparison. Okay, and so it's this concept of amplification, this idea that we can take a, a little signal that we detect digitally, a little vibration, and we can amplify it, and so we can study it when we might have missed it beforehand. Okay, so this idea that we can take a little signal, amplify it, make it easier to study, and then incorporate into our measurement and our data. Okay, so we've got two main technologies that we can use to measure earthquakes. A seismograph, where we're using a free, free hanging kind of weight to draw on a bit of paper, and analyze the, the paper, the seismogram, or we use a more sophisticated seismometer, which record, you know, is digital to our analog um, of the seismograph. It records the vibrations digitally, but allows us to amplify them for easier study. All right, thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.